Welcome back to the Balance Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Rinthigpen. Always excited to be in the place with you. All right, guys, for those of you who have been following the BBP, you know 2024 has been super heavy on international travel. And just coming off the mothership, literally, from Ghana a few weeks ago and trying to, you know, come back to the land of the realities of how much I wish I wasn't back home and I was back there because it was beautiful and it was wonderful. I'm really excited to continue to embrace all of our international brothers and sisters and just welcome them into the BBB family. And I hope that you will too, because this beautiful soul that I have for you today is incredible. And I have to admit, she's done a lot of brilliant things in the tech space. So I want you to welcome with me Abare Oyekwe. She is the founder of Ted Clin and lead event coordinator of Connect, helping beginner tech professionals get into tech roles and teaching data skills online. I don't know about y'all. I'm a really brilliant human, but tech is not my ministry. It's not where I show up in my most profound space. So I'm always really excited when we have the opportunity to have beautiful conversations with people who are just smarter than us in other areas of life. So welcome to the BBP. How are you today? I'm amazing. I am so excited to be here. Um, So excited to dive into the conversation. Yeah, I'm excited. It's a great day. Yeah, it is a great day. And you look gorgeous. Your skin is glowing today. Like you are, you're giving life to us today. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I don't want to get into this skincare routine, but I, I, I use Korean skincare and it's been amazing. Oh, I like it. Okay. All right. I'm I'm about that life. I will try something new every once in a blue that (laughs) gives me a little bit more of a glow and doesn't let people know that I'm a grandmother. So yeah, I'm 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 for it. (laughs) You're like a grandmother. Are you a grandmother? I am. Yeah, my kids are 27 and 23, and my oldest, my son, has two babies that are five and six years old. That's amazing. That's amazing. We, we, we be trying. We, we try. I try not to let the stress show up on my face. I try. <laughs> By balancing boldly, right? <laughs> right? So I would love for you to share with everyone just a little bit about how you got into the workspace and like what you're doing at TechClan, why you decided to really make tech your ministry and show up so powerfully for people like me who really just don't know what they're doing. Yeah, that, uh, thank you. Um, so... I think that it was accidental. I didn't really plan to do what I'm doing. I think it's faith. Like that's really what God planned for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am an immigrant. I was born in Nigeria. I moved here in my early 20s. I think I was, what, 21 nice. when I moved to the United States. Um, I have a very, you know, my degree from Nigeria is in computer science. And I'd always known that I would work in technology, Mm -hmm. Um, but I I also had like a passion for like media. And like, I've always been a social media person for Uh MySpace and Facebook and Twitter. Like I've always had like a very big online personality, right? And so like every single phase of my life, I would share online. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to the United States and got my first um, tech job, I it was just normal for me to continue to share my journey online because that's what I did, right? But there was a lot of interest, I noticed, with people just saying, hey, so how did you get your job? You're an immigrant. You just moved here. You're you're making six figures. Like, I'm born in America, and I don't even make six figures, you know? That's real. Yeah, a lot of questions. A lot of people started asking questions about, wait, you're an immigrant and you're able to do this. Like, how how is that happening? And so being someone who was already, like, talking about my life online, even like I used to post travel content before I started talking about tech. Um, it just made more sense for me to continue to answer the questions that I was getting. So I didn't really plan to like advocate for technology, which is how I like to brand what I do. Yeah. Um, 
but it was just something that there was so many questions that needed answers at that time. And I just, it just kind of fell on my tie to answer those questions. So I just kind of went with it. And then it eventually grew into a business. It grew into other things, but it was very accidental. I never sat down and had a plan to start a platform or build a business or anything like that. It just kind of happened. And I just went with it. I love that you're an accidental millionaire, right? Like I, we, we might even name this episode that like accidental millionaire. I, right. I love that you kind of fell into what was happening around you because you leaned in and you heard God's call that this was a space where you could show up fully. And by showing up fully there, everyone that you help could see how much your faith is leading you, which is pivotal. I don't need to tell you, right? Preaching to the choir. But for those that are listening, something else that you said, um, if you are new to the BBP, I apologize that you were not ready for this. But I do believe that thick thighs and systems save lives. And you said it fell into your thighs. (laughs) So I'm like, yes, thick thighs. Yes. (laughs) And that it fell right there. So I'm assuming because you grew it into a business, at some point you were like, I need to put a system in place so I don't get overwhelmed. There's a lot of questions coming in. Uh, Social media was just kind of your your play space. It wasn't necessarily in the beginning, the place that you were like, no, this is business. This is work. I'm showing up. And for some people, the place that they play can get tainted when it turns into work. Like they start to resent that they don't have a place to play anymore because now it's so work focused or so heavy. So for Mm -hmm. your balance, like how did you decide to like create this system that would keep you from being overwhelmed and burning out so you can still enjoy what you were doing? Mm, that's a really good question. And so I, I, like I tell people, I have one Instagram account now, but when I started, I had to open a new one mm-hmm. because I would get over flooded with all these messages. And at that point I didn't really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, like I wanted to only get messages from my friends. I just wanted yeah. to get messages from my family. Like Instagram was just like, if I, I had to make my account public because like all the questions and the people who were reaching out. Um, but, you know, for me, even though I was very um, open and I share my life um, online, I still wanted a bit of intimacy. I still wanted, it, it, I didn't want it to be so, like with work, you need boundaries, right? That's and right. there's only so much that you can share with people who you don't completely know, right. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, th- I think how I, the only way that it made sense to me at that point was to start a new account. So I started a new account. I was like, okay. So, and I, I remember making an announcement saying, if you are here for tech, please go to the, <laughs> go to the <laughs> other room. <laughs> yeah. I remember I'm making that post and just saying, yeah, this is getting overwhelm me like if you're here for tech i'm gonna create a new tech account like go over here let's talk tech here like this is more like i just want to be like i want to like i want to see my family go on vacation and and things like that yeah so that's kind of how and then that was like very instrumental because now for me was like okay now i need to hire i need to do this so it kind of like helped me create structure because prior to that like i said it was very sporadic for me. I didn't think about consistency. I didn't think about, it was just like, Hey, I feel like I have a great angle. I'm at the restaurant. I'm going to pull, you know what I mean? Yeah. I creating a new account helped me to be more intentional about mm-hmm. knowing that people were waiting for the information and I needed to present it in a certain way. I needed to show up in a certain way. I needed, to, you know, it, I think that was the biggest pivotal thing that I did that kind of helped me get to where I am uh, because if I did it and it also like my family they're like on my personal Instagram or, or I, I don't have that page anymore uh, but mm-hmm. when I had it um, my, my like my my sister would say hey what are you doing like you know it was it was a bit weird for them to yeah. see me show up and do things like that right so it, that that really also helped me to kind of like make that distinction between like work and like my personal life. I love that you're talking about this, Barry. Like you hit so many really instrumental good points for everyone listening, whether they are full on entrepreneur, considering being an influencer or just hosting more content for whatever right. it is that they're doing in their like authority leadership. 
in their own lives, especially in 2024 and beyond when so many companies are laying off people and, you know, you just need to make sure that you have a way to consistently show up regardless of how you're playing in the background and how you're getting your paycheck. Right. And you, you hit, I mean, you drop so many gems in that and just to kind of bring it back for everyone who's listening from a balance perspective, your truth was, I need to make sure that I can still have fun while I'm creating this structure and following God's lead right. with this accidental discovery that I didn't even know existed. And my formula for balance is admit the truth of what you want over the boundaries that you create to achieve that truth as reality, which is what you did. You were like, in order for me to be myself, to mm-hmm. enjoy this, to not resent it, to not be overly overwhelmed and create structure, I need some boundaries. So let me open the second door create this other Instagram. I know this is uncomfortable for family or friends that only get to see the playful, fun, you know, fashionista me, right? Good skincare me, like that version. But there is, you know, there's another side to me. There is a brilliance side that is more Mm -hmm. formal and can give, you know, tactical tools and strategies and information that maybe my family doesn't want or need but there is a population of people who do. So you creating this other room, this other door was a a beautiful visual boundary, but also an actual like literal one that you created. I I also heard you talk about the organic content creation that you did. Like, well, you know, I'm at a restaurant and okay, beautiful play, scenery, aesthetics, you know, whatever it is, this window, I can get a good walking by scene here, you know, whatever that is. So you were infusing some of the, even the work pieces in a really natural way that didn't feel overwhelming. Like it didn't feel like work because you were able to kind of incorporate it, but also hiring team for the various elements of your systems in the back office allowed you to say, okay, take this wonderful thing that I did while I happened to really be at lunch with my lover or whoever I'm at lunch with. And now I need you to take this and chop this up for real and put it on the right page. I love that you were able to integrate the both sides of you because that does help you not feel resentment to the work or to the people that are blowing up your DMs and asking you 5,000 questions all the time. Right. Um, Yeah, that's exactly what I did. And I think another thing that I need to mention with hiring was it wasn't like the first thing that came to my mind was like hiring. Like I know that as someone who runs a business, you need to hire, you can't do everything yourself. But for me, it's because I, another reason why I hired was because I still had my nine to five as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it was like, how do I show up for these people and show up at work? Like it's too much stuff to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, I never thought that I was going to hire someone, uh, but I was drowning (laughs) and I was Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I need to get someone to actually help me. And then also like the hiring also helped because I knew nothing about the back end of social media. Like, like I said, for me, what's mostly playful, Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I, I'm, a, I'm really vocal online. So hiring also helped me to start learning about like the back end, the structure, like, and all of that good stuff. Yeah. How did you convince yourself, your inner self to trust someone with your new baby, which is the business? Um, I, I'm, I'm hands on still. So mm-hmm. like, I'm very much involved in everything, mm-hmm. um, even to this day. So I, you know, I have like check-ins consistently with people. Hey, what's our strategy? What are we doing? This, that, 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 that. So uh, that just helps me to trust people to to do their their parts. Again, I know that I don't have the capacity to do as much, uh, to do everything. Mm-hmm. And I know that, you know, you, I need to allow people to help me achieve like the goal. Um, so that was just something that I knew and I, 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 I just did. Because, because there was absolutely no way that I could have done everything myself. It's just not possible. I hear you saying that you wanted it bad enough, right? Like you wanted this to be successful enough that even though it was awkward and uncomfortable and, you know, it's hard to trust people with your baby, right? Like it's hard to say, all right, mama's going to the market, keep the baby safe. Like that is hard. But I do appreciate that you put in some accountability 
you know, structure and steps with a daily or every other day, however your kind of back office is set up to make sure Mm -hmm. that you're checking in with your team, answering their questions, finding out their successes, hearing their challenges. So even though you're not in the weeds of all the things, you're still able to be super integrated as a leader, which is important and often challenging for many people because now you're dealing with other people's personalities. Right. <laughs> right. Um, I see your face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that's people, people, oh my God, people can be, it's, I think that you learn, you continue to learn. Cause I remember like my first difficult, um, would I say employee, the person that she was a contractor, like I hired her off, uh, she was a <laughs> contractor, um, but she was so difficult to work with. Mm-hmm. And letting her go saying, Hey, I cannot continue to work with you because it's just, it was such a tough decision for me. Mm. Right. So I think that it's been such a learning process for me. Um, but just knowing that you're going to like take food off somebody's table, uh, but knowing that that's the right thing to do as well. Um, was 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 really tough. So I, I think you continue to learn throughout the process, right? Yeah. You just to learn and say, hey, I, this is the best decision for the business. I'm unfortunately we can't work with you. Uh, we need to find someone who best fits this or who has better expertise in this. You know, it's it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. I I also hear you saying that you know, as a successful entrepreneur who was an accidental millionaire, you you do have to be willing to be a forever learner, right? Like to not feel like because you've made X amount of success, not just in dollars, but in impact and the, the way that you serve and the amount of people you serve and how you support them and their dreams, that you have to be open to, you don't know everything. You know, you know a lot, you've learned a lot, you've made some incredible waves and in parentheses, there's still some challenges that you didn't even know were going to be challenges until they presented themselves. And I, I also hear you really clearly, Barry, talking about the, the empathy that comes with being a leader and owning your own company, running a company where you have other humans that are involved in what you do and knowing that you have to be a person that's fiscally responsible to your organization fiscally responsible to your family and also empathetic to the human that you're working with that this isn't easy to just lay people off or to cut their contract or to end it sooner than you thought you would have to but you do have to make tough choices in your business for it to continue to be impactful for the other people that need you to be around that need technical to be here right like that's super important and i hope everyone listening to this is really um connected to that reality that it's not all you know boat rides and plane rides and you know all the joys that we see on Instagram LinkedIn and wherever else in the world we're kind of peering through the window of but there are some really tough choices and you need to be human in order to be successful well you should be human in order to be successful in the process and I really appreciate your vulnerability in that because not a lot of people are willing to talk about those hard parts and it's real. Um, it, it does get challenging. I, I love and enjoy what I do mm-hmm. now. I think that, you know, like I said, it's God's plan for me. Um, so, and I, I truly enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. like the content, I enjoy talking about technology, the impact, right? That's one, one thing that keeps me going. When I think about how many people will helped get into jobs, when I think yeah. about how many people how many families have higher income just because, you know, someone took a leap and took a chance on themselves and learned the right skills and things like that, you know, um, it is just enough to continue going. <laughs> it's yeah. just enough to continue going. Yeah. No, that, that's a big deal. And yeah. I'm assuming, switching hats, that because you make this great impact and you're doing such good work, that you also leave some spaciousness for yourself to play and to have fun for your loved ones or whoever you're loving on. What does that part of your life look like? Um, That's quite an interesting um, question. And something that I really shy away from talking about publicly because, you know, I I always like to protect 
um, the person that I'm with Mm -hmm. or I was with because we're no longer together. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, you know, I I would never put him out publicly just because um, for me, it was just a a way of protecting him. I didn't want him to, I don't want anybody asking me questions. I don't know if he can handle that kind of attention. So I'm just like, yeah, this is something that is really important to me. This yeah. is my safe space, and I just want to keep that private. I don't want that to be like. Yeah, I, I, wanna... I, I respect that a lot. So I've been married uh, legally twenty five years this year, and mm-hmm. together with my husband, we've been together since we were seventeen, so over thirty years. And he is very private. So I I respect it from the perspective of I'm married to one of those people that it's like, yeah, I support you, show up fully, do all your things, but I'm super private I'm super introverted and that's just not a part of the life that I really want to talk about um Mm -hmm. so let me rephrase the question in a a more spacious way when you're not working and you know really dedicated to family and business and supporting yourself how are you giving yourself permission to pause um how am I giving myself permission to pause I like to travel uh, mm-hmm. Travel is one of the ways that I um, give myself permission. I I travel a lot. I'm actually introverted. A lot of people may not know that, but you know, I I'm an introvert. I enjoy spending time with like my family, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be anything lavish every time. Uh, we can do a family vacation, or it could be just barbecue in the backyard. Like that <laughs> that works as well. Nice. Um, yeah, so uh, for me, just spending time with my family, um, be it on a trip, be it mm-hmm. just stay, staying home and spending time with like my sister. The, my all my sisters have kids, and so it, one of the ways that I get away would be to go over there and spend time with their kids, mm-hmm. or you know, talk to my my parents. They live in Nigeria, mm-hmm. uh, and so. You know, there's always a lot to bring them up to speed on. Um, Or just hanging out with my friends. I have a really close circle of friends, very close niche circle of friends that I that I hang out with occasionally. We're all very busy, but when we do, when we do uh, come together, you know, we have we have a great time together. So those are the ways that I kind of shut down work and kind of prioritize Mm -hmm. like personal time and family um, and my friends. I hear you so like nonchalantly saying like, yeah, so Nikita, I'm a rich auntie and I show up for (laughs) my nieces and nephews to have fun and to play with them. Um, But I also hear that it's the intimacy for you, that deeper connection time, whether it's deeper connection with yourself, being at home, relaxing, just enjoying all that you worked for, or that deeper connection time with friends and family, like intimacy, you know, from our green room conversation is where I live, right? Like in that that space for amplifying. So I appreciate it on all the levels. And I'm hoping that everyone listening to this is really able to, to kind of take away from the reality that you don't have to constantly be on. You don't have to be hustling and grinding, you know, every hour of every day. Uh, You don't know a Barry, but we have another podcast called The Lazy Overachiever. And Mm -hmm. it's really about embracing, you know, the inner brilliance that you have, trusting yourself, trusting your faith that you have enough in the way that you have it. Anything that you need will be downloaded to you to kind of guide for what you need. Trust your advisors if you were guided to hire them to help you, Mm -hmm. coaches, advisors, mentors, you know, whoever. But also embrace a little lazy because that rest is important and it helps you to be the overachiever when it's time, you know, to put the the pedal to the metal, if you will. I know I'm kind of dating myself. I sound real old when I say that, but you know what I meant. (laughs) I know what you mean. mean. Yeah. And one thing I've learned is that if you don't slow down, your butt Mm -hmm. is going to you to slow down uh there have been times when maybe we're running a campaign and i just have to like keep pushing and then you know i'm like i can't keep going <laughs> like mm-hmm. you know like i'm like i'm burnt out i've been burnt out so many times so i know yeah. to prioritize rest um yeah. that's definitely something that your body needs and without that you're not gonna uh, be successful at all 
That is so real. Oh, I could talk to you forever. How can people connect with you and learn more about the great impact work that you're doing? Um, how can you connect with me? I am on Instagram. I am on LinkedIn. I'm on TikTok. I, I have all the platforms now. So it's Nello Techie everywhere. And that's N-E-L-O. And then the Techie, which is T-E-C-H-I-E. And um, a lot of people ask me where the Nello came in because my, my name is Iberi. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. my middle name, actually. My middle name is Chinello. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. Oh, yeah. My middle name is Chinello. So that's where the Nello comes from. I think that's beautiful. So you guys don't know, I was teasing a berry when we first started. um, And I was like, oh, like a berry, like juicy, like a juicy berry. This makes so much sense because of your good popping skin. So... (laughs) Right, a berry. Yes. I love it. It, it all it all makes so much sense. And then so does Nello Techie because of your middle name, which is also very beautiful. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. Thank you for showing up today, showing up fully, playing with me in this conversation, being so honest, raw, and vulnerable. I do appreciate it. And it does matter. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Balance Boldly listeners, as always, I tell you, you're going to get the most potent of potent humans every single episode that we are graced with someone else's presence. So thank you again for listening and tuning in. I have two asks of you today. The first is to think of one person that you can think of in your ecosystem that would really be supported by hearing this particular episode hearing a Barry story, hearing how she's making room for herself, and even just being an accidental millionaire and leaning into the pool of what God was clearly trying to show her, what her faith was trying to show her that she needed to lean into. And she did it and became very successful and impactful because of it. So just think of one person in your ecosystem that needs it. If it's you, hallelujah. If it's not, please share. The second is I want you to go. Enjoy the balance of your day, but remember, do it boldly. 